In my last video, I shared with you three options that are available to you if you have your study permit refused. In this video, I want us to take a look at the study permit refusal letter and find out some of the reasons that can lead to your refusal. And in case you get one of them, what you can do to at least counter your refusal and improve the chances of you getting approved in your next application. Nearly all refusals for Canadian study permit applications are based on section 216 of the Immigration and Refugee Protection Regulations. And if you have been refused before, your letter will read and include one of these reasons. Thank you for your interest in studying in Canada. After careful review of your study permit application and supporting documentation, I have determined that your application does not meet the requirement of the Immigration and Refugee Protection Act, IRPA, and Immigration and Refugee Protection Regulation, IRPR. I am refusing your application on the following grounds. One, I am not satisfied that you have sufficient funds, including income or assets, to carry out your stated purpose in coming to Canada or to maintain yourself while in Canada and to effect your departure. Two, I am not satisfied that you will leave Canada at the end of your stay, as stipulated in Section 2161 of the IRPR, based on the purpose of your visits. Three, I am not satisfied that you will leave Canada at the end of your stay, as stipulated in Section 216 of the IRPR, based on the limited employment prospects in your country of residence. 4. I am not satisfied that you will leave Canada at the end of your stay, as stipulated in Subsection 216 of the IRPR, based on your current employment situation. 5. I am not satisfied that you will leave Canada at the end of your stay, as stipulated in subsection 216 of the IRPR based on your personal assets and financial status. You are welcome to reapply if you feel you can respond to these concerns and can demonstrate that your situation meets the requirement. All new applications must be accompanied by a new processing fee. Now you see why I advise that when you get any of this letter, you should request for a GCMS notes because they will pick at least one of these five reasons to give every single person who was refused. So how do you know what led to your refusal and how different is it from the other person who was refused? But by requesting for your GCMS notes, you will know the exact reasons that possibly led to your refusal. Now let's pick each of these reasons and try to decode what the visa officer is trying to tell you. Even though you will get a personalized reason if you request for your GCMS notes. Refusal based on the purpose of your visit. The purpose of your visit is to study. So this is the code message from the visa officer that he does not believe that your reason for coming to Canada is genuine and that actually he does not believe that when you come, you will be studying. Sometimes you can be lucky and the visa officer will state categorically on the letter that he does not believe that you are a genuine student. However, many times officers will rely on this phrase to give a general reason for their refusal based on purpose of visit, especially if the reason for coming to Canada was not discussed in your application. This is why your study plan or your statement of purpose is important because that is the document that will give you the opportunity to state your reason for coming to Canada and explain to the visa officer why coming to Canada you will be a genuine student and that your reason for coming is actually genuine. A study permit refusal based on purpose of visits is most of the time related to your study plan or your statement of purpose. If your statement of purpose is vague and general, then most likely it's going to lead to a refusal because the visa officer does not have an idea of what you are coming to do in Canada and does not know how it's going to impact your life and make you a better person. If you should 
decide to come here to study, if the purpose of your visit is the only reason on your refusal letter, then there's a good chance that the visa officer believes that you are not a genuine student and that you are just using the study route as a way to enter the Canadian job or labor market. Meaning he believes that if you come to Canada, there's a chance that you will decide to work illegally and that studying wouldn't be a priority to you. So there's a high chance that if you enter Canada, you might not even step on the university campus and you just go straight to working. So he believes that you are not being honest about your reason for wanting to come to Canada. So if this happens to you, what you have to do is now to relook at your study plan, make the necessary changes, try to be as clear as possible, and make sure that you articulate your reasons for wanting to study and why you want to come to Canada to the visa officer in your subsequent application. Refusal based on your personal assets and financial status. Demonstrating your ability to take care of yourself financially and pay for your tuition and living expenses when you are in Canada is one of the major parts of your study permit application. If you do not show enough proof of funds or provide enough documentation to back the amount that you are stating that is available to you for studying in Canada, then there is a high chance of having your study permit denied because it is important to the immigration officer to know how your proof of funds was accumulated, how the money that you are saying is available to you was actually brought together. You would like to know who is paying for your study in Canada because studying is not cheap and that's when you are in Canada, money is not going to be a problem, that you will not be forced out of studying onto the job market and that studying will be a priority to you. Because the last thing that he wants to happen is that you get to Canada only to find out that you don't have money available to you to study and that you need to enter the job market to be able to get money to take care of yourself. That means the high chance of you working illegally is very high, which is something that he doesn't want to happen. So even though students are allowed to work, he doesn't want that to be a priority for you that studying should be your first priority, then working or any other thing comes second. This particular reason for refusal can easily be overcome in subsequent applications if you decide to attach a letter of explanation of proof of funds, which will allow you to explain where you are getting the monies available to you from, how they are coming together, and that what is the source of those funds. So if it's an uncle who is sponsoring you, how does he make his money? If it's coming from your mother, where is the money coming from? And that if she decides to support you, how is it going to impact your family? Because they don't want a situation where you are coming to use all the family funds to study and your siblings who will be left back home are going to suffer at that expense. So they would like to know where the money is coming from and they also they are also very careful of money laundering. So they will vet the source. That is why you need to attach documentation to show the source of the funding. If it's your own bank account, how do you make your money? Who is paying your salary? That's why sometimes attaching your pay slips, your bank statement showing the money coming in, other investments, and even a letter from your employer are very important. And one other mistake that most applicants make in this particular situation, and it happened to myself, is because the documents that are available to them is too big and that they cannot compress it to four megabytes if they are using the old platform, or even two megabytes if they are using the new platform, they over compress the document to the extent that it is not even readable. It happened to me. And now when you put it through the application and the visa officer cannot read the documents, there's no way for him to verify the details, which might end up you being refused because if he cannot read the document, there's no way 
you can also vet the sources and vet the statement that you have provided. So be careful when compressing your documents in this case. One trick that I advise most people to use is if your documents are too big, you can submit the core documents for your proof of funds and the other ones you can send them through web forms and attach a note to it. That way they will be attached to your application and whoever is reviewing your application will have access to them. Refusal based on qualifications, previous studies, missing mark sheets, academic record, level of establishment, and language skills. If you submitted any of these documentations with your study permit application, that is transcripts, report cards, mark sheets, evaluations, language test results, be it IELTS or even CELPIP, this can work in your favor. However, if your marks or grades in these particular reports are below average, they can easily go against you and possibly lead to your refusal because the officer officer will be vetting to see that you will be able to at least complete your studies. So if your grades are below average, you'll be wondering how you can at least finish the particular studies if your grades were below average in previous studies or even if your English score is below average, you'll be wondering how you can cope in class if you cannot read and understand the language of instruction. But the truth is, if these documents were called to your admission to your university, then if you don't submit them with your study permit application, they can also go negatively against you when it comes to the approval process and can lead to your refusal because sometimes some of the admission letters will have stated on the conditions under which your admission was given so the visa officer will be looking at it and comparing it against your documents that you submitted to see whether you meet that particular qualification for instance the course that i am studying the one of the conditions was at least you should have five years of working experience so in that case the visa will be looking to see whether I meet that particular condition. You don't have to be a straight A student to be granted a study permit to study in Canada. However, if your scores are below par, you will have the immigration officer wondering how you even got your admission if you don't meet the criteria for even admission to the school. Don't forget these officers process thousands of these applications. So they've seen students like you apply to the school that you are applying. So they have an idea of the conditions for admission to most of these schools. So try and do your best and submit the best of scores to increase the chances of having your study permit approved. Refusal based on family ties. Family ties in Canada or even home country are common reasons for refusal for most study permit applications. If you are applying for a temporary residency visa, like a study permit, the visa officer wants to make sure that should in case your visa expires, that you will leave the country and that you will not stay back illegally. If you already have family members living in Canada, then he believes there is a high chance that if your study permit expires, you might not leave Canada because you have a reason to stay in Canada. Yes. So you need to go the extra mile to prove to him that yes. even yes. though you have family members in Canada, if your study permit expires, you won't be an illegal resident in Canada. And sometimes it can go against you if the family member that you have living in Canada has not actually been a good citizen or possibly has done something wrong in the past. And on the other side, if you don't have family members in your current country of residence, it can also go against you because based on the visa officer's reasoning, you will be wondering whether you have reasons to leave Canada if your visa expires, since there's nobody back home to go back to. And also there's nothing pulling you back home after your visa expires. So it is important to explain all these things in your study plan 
to give the immigration officer enough reason not to doubt your reasoning that you overstay and that if your visa expires, you have reasons to go back home. That is why family ties are important. So when you are writing your statement of purpose, make sure to call out those ties that pulled you back to your country of residence and gives you a reason to go back home after your study permit expires. But sometimes family ties in Canada or country of residence becomes irrelevant because as an applicant, you might be lucky to have all your family members living back home. And currently, there's no family member living in Canada for that to hold you to Canada, for you to create ties to Canada and give you reason not to leave Canada. But the funny thing is, even in this situation, sometimes people who have family members living in their home country and nobody in Canada still get this as a refusal on their letter, which doesn't even make sense. Refusal based on current employment situation. Current employment situation can seem like a counterintuitive reason to refuse somebody's study permit application. This reason for refusal usually comes up for people that I call mature students. That's the group of people who are normally past the traditional age for people, someone to be in school. That's people who have been in the corporate world for some time and have been working and are now making a decision to go back to study or go back to at least get a new degree or even improve their current skills. If you have been out of school for about 10 years, then realistically the immigration officer will be expecting you to be working or have at least been working for the past 10 years when you submit your study permit application. But if you are not working or have not been working for the last 10 years since you've been out of school, then this can easily be grounds for refusal for your study permit application. That is why I always advise that if you are a mature student, apply as one, try to show proof that you've been working or even if you have not been working since the last time you were in school, it is important to explain to the immigration officer what you have been doing and that you have not been idle, you have been using your time judiciously, and also if you are currently working, try to get letters from your employers to show that you are currently employed and add your CV to show all the roles or jobs that you've held since the last time that you were in school. Because most times, if you're a mature student, you might be sponsoring yourself, and he will be wondering where your money is coming from. And if you have not been working since the last time you were in school, he will be wondering how is studying in Canada this time around going to improve your chances of at least being employed? If the last time you left school, you couldn't get yourself employed. So if this was the reason for your refusal, then in subsequent application, it is important to establish the fact that you are employed. Or if you are currently unemployed, establish the fact that you have been employed since the last time you were in school, and also explain the reasons behind why you are currently unemployed or what you have been doing at the time you submitted your application. For students who just left school recently and are just going back to school, usually this is not a reason for refusal for them because the immigration officer will not expect somebody who was studying full-time to be working full-time. So this might not show up on their refusal letters. Refusal based on travel history. Travel history is another reason for refusal which can sometimes seem vague. Because like what most people will say, if you are not going to allow me to travel this time around, how do you expect me to get a travel experience? But when as an applicant, you have never traveled before, this can easily be the grounds for refusal for your study permit application. If other parts of your applications were also weak when you submitted it, because the immigration officer will be wondering for someone who has not left his country before, what are the chances that you will leave Canada if your temporary resident permit expires? Because he believes there is a high likelihood that you will stay. But if you have some travel history, 
you have proven that you have left your country and been able to at least come back to your home country without overstaying. So that goes well for you. But for someone who hasn't left his country before, he's now wondering, what are the chances that you will leave Canada when your study permit expires? And this always comes into play when other aspects of your application are weak. And even for applicants who have travel experience, if you have overstayed a temporal visa in the past before, this can easily be grounds for refusal for your study permit application because the officer will be wondering if you have done it before, then the chances of you doing it again is very high. So as an applicant, if you have overstayed a visa before, then go the extra mile to explain the circumstances that led to you overstaying an old visa so that it will not be used against you in your current application. Refusal based on financial resources without working in Canada. As stated earlier, financial reasons are one of the common reasons for refusal for most study permit applications. All temporary residence applicants are supposed to show proof that they can sustain themselves financially in Canada without having to resort to working. So even though you have the option to work also in Canada, they don't want that to be the core source of your income when you are in Canada. They want to believe that you have enough money available to you to cater to your needs whilst you are here to study. International students were allowed in the past to work for at least 20 hours a week while studying. And thanks to the new immigration minister, beginning of November 15th, international students will be allowed to work for more than 20 hours whilst they are studying. But the truth is, and if you ask anybody who has studied in Canada before, and they are going to be frank with you, it will be difficult for you to take care of yourself fully whilst resorting to only income made while studying as a student. You will need some amount of money coming in from outside. That is why the Canadian immigration system does not count the money that you will be making while studying towards your proof of funds. Applicants for study permits are supposed to show that they have access to liquid funds whilst they are studying in Canada. And typically, as a student, you are expected to have enough money to cover your first year tuition fee and at least $10,000 to cover your living expenses. And if you are coming with a spouse, an extra $4,000. And for any additional child, that's an additional 3,000 Canadian dollars that you are expected to have. And you are expected to disclose all your sources of funding during the application process. So if proof of funding is one of the reasons that showed up on your refusal letter, then in your subsequent application, you need to do well to at least make sure you have enough money to take care of yourself and meet the financial requirements and also show the sources of all these funds. Refusal based on immigration status in your country of residence. If you are submitting an application for study permit to come to Canada, then you need to show that you have proof of residence in the country that you are currently resident in. So if you are an applicant in a country other than your current country of nationality, then it is important to show your legal status in that country during your application process. If you don't submit the proof of your legal residency, then there is a high chance that your study permit application will be refused on these grounds. And also, if your refusal came up and this particular reason showed up in your letter, then what you need to do in your subsequent application is to make sure to attach your proof of residency in that country in the next application so that it cannot be used against you subsequently. These are a few pointers that I have identified in the study permit process that you can use to decode the reasons behind your refusal even before you request for your GCMS notes 
So whilst you are waiting in that one month period for the GCMS notes to show up, you can at least start working with this to put together a much more complete and robust application which has a higher chance of approval. And I hope these pointers will guide you to understand your Canadian study permit refusal letter. So at least you can make the necessary changes to join the 400,000 people that Canada will be expecting to enter their country the coming year. If you got value out of this video, kindly hit the subscribe button and join this family and let's learn together. And do well to hit the like button as it does well for my videos. And don't forget to share this video with family and friends that you think will get value out of it. And if you have any questions or ideas or videos that you want me to address, leave them in the comment section. And I will always respond to all my comments 24 hours after posting the videos. So do well to put your comments there accordingly. Till the next video, cheers.